This right here, everybody should be familiar with. This is called a sandwich, a staple of the American lazy, fat ass way of life. And when you look at this sandwich, I feel like it was a perfect representation for this week's Raw. You've got your bread, your meat, and your cheese. And when you look at the ingredients, you can see where it compares to this week's show. The top or the bottom, the beginning and the end of the sandwich, however you want to look at it, is the bread. And in this case, it's Wonder Bread. It's not the creme de la creme of white bread, but it's not the store brand crap that you buy for a dollar because you're too broke or cheap to get Wonder Bread. It's solid. And the top or the beginning represents the Miz TV segment. The bottom or the end represents the last man standing match between Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. And this bread, while good but not great, looks a whole lot better compared to the heart of the sandwich, the meat of the sandwich, which features budding lunch meat and store brand Kroger cheese. And no matter how much you try to dress up that meat or that cheese or try to pretend or believe that it's something bigger, it's something better, every bite just reeks of complacency, disappointment, and being too broke and or cheap to be able to do better. You can't fool yourself into thinking it's any better than it actually is. Hmm. That's pretty bad. I don't even know if you would say it's mediocre. It's just bad. And a perfect representation of the shit sandwich that was this week's Raw. You kick off of Miz TV. The Miz and Heyman stuff was very good. Brock smashing all three members. The Miz, Taraj, and Miz was fine. I wonder who the Miz is working with at SummerSlam because you went away from the Jason Jordan stuff. You have Brock smashing him. What are you doing with your mid-card MVP? And then if Brock wants to attack three people instead of doing this roleplay crap, why wouldn't he actually attack the three people that he's wrestling at SummerSlam to try and weaken them in a match that he is incredibly disadvantageously positioned? Just saying. But a good way to kick off Raw, and especially when you look at what happened throughout the rest of the show leading up to the main event, it looks a whole lot better. Like this crap with Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Seth Rollins and Sheamus' match was boring, and Dean Ambrose and Cesaro's match was even worse. Just because a match goes long doesn't mean it's any good. And Ambrose and Cesaro went on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And you're like, ta 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 today, Junior! If Ambrose spent half the time he spent in this match in the shower once or twice a month and washed his ass, maybe people wouldn't be so grossed out by him. But the whole crap of them coming back together, and I don't trust you, and I don't trust you, I don't care, because we know where this is going, and it's not done well. Even if the Canadian crowd is popping for it, it doesn't fucking matter. This is stupid, and I'm over it already. Then you look at Jason Jordan versus Jean-Pierre Goulet. Are we trying to get Rocky Maya via fuck you die Jason die heat on this kid? Or is the WWE that unintentionally stupid to think that we're not going to associate him with his dad in any real way on camera. We're just going to throw him out there in a match without giving people reason to actually really care about the kid who is talented and who has a multi-million dollar look to him. We're going to throw him out there against a Canadian jobber because we think in Toronto that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Just like the idea of trotting out there, Bailey, with her separated shoulder on a live microphone. If it's work, it's shoot, who knows, who cares. Thank you, Nia Jax. Ha ha. No, but in all seriousness, Bailey is a perfect example of, no matter what you do at NXT, no matter how much you get over with the NXT crowd, once Vince and Kevin Dunn sink their greasy, grimy, grubby grips and Bugs Bunny teeth into them, they can ruin anybody. And even the Canadian fans turning on Bailey because ultimately there's no reason to care about Bailey. There's no reason to like Bailey. She is eminently not as likable as she should be because of the things WWE does. So we get two women's triple threats, and of course Sasha Banks wins the first one because you have very little depth of women's roster in either Raw or SmackDown because of the brand split. So it's going to lead to repetitive finishes such as this. And of course, that's going to lead to another repetitive match between her and Nia Jax next week on Raw. And what's crazy about the second women's triple threat is you had a lot of people popping for Emma. And fuck Emma. She got her opportunity. She's stupid. She doesn't deserve it. Give it to somebody else. But I legit forgot Mickey James was still with the company. I, or more importantly, I forgot that she was actually on Raw. 
that's how poorly they have botched this. Like you bring in the Dudleys and RVD over the past couple of years and you squander them. And you've done the same thing with Mickey James. Like it makes it even worse because your women's division could use an established hand like her, one of the most talented women you've ever had, and you have squandered her and done nothing with her. After the first month or two, you got the old toy back and you loved it again, and then you remembered why you didn't want to play with it anymore, and you said, fuck it. So now we get yet another encounter between Naya and Sasha on Raw next week. <laughs> again, the shit sandwich just gets worse. Finn Balor gets a microphone, because who in the fuck thought it was a good idea to give Finn Balor a fucking hot mic? My God, that promo was terrible, wasn't it? Oh my God. And then, yes... After getting a sling blade, Bray Wyatt can magically just <laughs> apparate wherever the hell he wants to and he'll show back up on the Titan Tron. You know, it's hokey crap like this that would have worked for The Undertaker, but that's because The Undertaker was a badass and The Undertaker was a cool character. All of these things that Bray Wyatt isn't, and The Undertaker occasionally beat people that fucking mattered. Who gives a fuck about Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt? And you got Enzo and Show, so you call them Enz Show, versus the bald fucking jobbers. Why in the fuck did we break up Kaz and Enzo again? And especially looking at what you're doing here, it really makes you wonder, were you that annoyed with Enzo that you just had to sabotage a decent tag team, a somewhat entertaining tag team? And then the whole concept of all of this. We couldn't incorporate the Hardys, maybe because Jeff can't go to Canada, I don't fucking know. But we couldn't incorporate the Hardys in some shape or form with a video package, an interview, anything like that. And I know, again, what happened with one of the members of the Revival, with the ruptured bicep, you kind of left in a holding pattern. But I'm looking here and it's like it's end show versus the bald jobbers. And it all ultimately leads up to at SummerSlam, it's it's Cass versus Big Show in a shark cage match where Enzo's going to be locked in a shark cage. So instead of using a stipulation that is usually reserved for the heel manager or the heel associate to be locked up to prevent interference, we are locking up the baby face in the shark cage. And where is the recent infatuation with the WWE in these goddamn shark cage matches? Tazawa and Davari had a forgettable cruiserweight match because it's the wrong Davari and it's a Japanese wrestler you don't care about. You have a Golden Age promo with Goldust. I mean, it's appropriate because we can piss on this. And what's his next summer flop going to be? Because, oh man, that Shattered Dreams production of him and our truth was just five-star classic shit, wasn't it? And the sad thing is, is by the time we got here, before the main event, something that was actually good, I passed out, I fell asleep, hence why the Raw review is delayed. Hence why I'm trying to record it before SmackDown on Tuesday night after work. This show was terrible. Sitting there and having to sit through all of this to get to the main event that was very good is just too much of a chore sometimes, and it was too much of a chore on Monday night. As far as the last man standing match, why would you watch the pay-per-views when you can get a last man standing match featuring the two guys that are clearly having the feud of the year in WWE and Roman and Strowman on Raw? Why would you get the network? Why would you watch the pay-per-views? Why are we giving away all these types of matches on Raw? It was a very good match. Throwing the chair in his face and all this crap. Of course, Roman has to lose because Samoa Joe gets involved, which is curious because it leads you to believe they're doing Samoa Joe versus Roman going forward. So does that mean Joe's winning the title or does that mean he's not winning the title? And what does that mean for Braun Strowman for SummerSlam and beyond? It's just a shame that with the opening being good, and it kind of got me in good spirits, when you looked at that sandwich... So much of the rest of it was like budding lunch meat and store brand cheese. It was shit. And by the time you got to the end, it doesn't matter how good the bread is. You just remember how much you regret getting the ingredients and putting together that sandwich. And you wish you were eating just about anything else. Which is a perfect description to me of the shit sandwich that was this week's Raw.